My name is Carrie Crosley Minkley, and I was born in Malmo, Sweden on June 5, 1868. When I was three, I left Sweden to reside in New Zealand and Australia. At the age of nine, I came to the United States under the care of John Addison Slavin, an Oregon pioneer of 1850 who had come west from Missouri. His wife, Emma R. Ross, crossed the plains in 1847 with her family from Ohio. I entered the Tualatin Academy in 1885. After graduation, I met my husband, Jesse Crosley, and I married him twice. Once in December in 1886, in a simple ceremony by the Justice of the Peace, and another time in, in 1896 at the Methodist Episcopal Parsonage by Reverend T.L. Reverend Jones in Oregon City. C.W. Wirtz, a local builder in the area, built several homes in our neighborhood, and he built our home, too, on 1918 Birch Avenue. We had seven children, four sons, and three daughters. Trains were a big part of our lives and affected us in many ways. You see, Jesse was a steam engineer, and he dreamed of the day that the train would be up and running in Forest Grove. I think it was 1908. Jesse had been sick in bed for a year with pulmonary tuberculosis when Oregon Electric finally came through and laid tracks right behind the house. Jesse died the morning after. Thank goodness, though, that he was a member of the Woodsmen of the World, a fraternal benefit society. The insurance paid for his services, provided by Limber Chapel. The inscription on his grave marker reads, Dum Taget Clamat, which is Latin for, Though Silent He Speaks. The train also took the life of my son Jesse, excuse me, of my son Clyde in 1919. He was working as a fireman on the Tillamook line and um, he slipped and fell in front of a train and was crushed. After my husband died, I turned my, my house into a, a thing called Traveler's Home, which was a boarding home, and I ran that for almost 40 years. My boarders were men and women from, from who, who ranged in age from 17 to 84. When I was 48, I married another Jesse, Jesse Clark Minkley, although this union ended after seven years in a divorce. I inherited some money after my father, Per Larson, died, and I invested this in property here in Forest Grove. I was also able to send my youngest, Avis, to Pacific University. After college, Avis started a semi-professional baseball team here in Forest Grove, and he also opened Crosley's Card Room. It was right next to Joe the Barber. Back then, Forest Grove was a dry town, so Avis's place wasn't called a tavern, but let's just say he had a way of hiding his spirits. <laughs> in my final years, I spent a lot of time with Avis and his wife, Martha, at their home on Pacific Avenue. I lived to be 84, and I passed away in 1952.